In the following video, we're going to examine how to graph linear inequalities. Now, remember, when you're graphing linear inequalities, you need to get them in slope-intercept form, just like you do with linear equations. It's just now you're going to be dealing with an inequality symbol here, whether less than, greater than, less than, or equal to, or greater than, or equal to. The other things we need to remember is when you're graphing linear inequalities, you need to ask yourself two questions. First question is, do I use a dashed or solid line? And then the next question is, where is the solution region? And where is the solution region means you need to remember how do you shade? That is your shading. Do you shade above the line? Do you shade below the line? And so we're going to remember to ask ourselves these questions when we are going through the examples. So let's first start. Graph each function. You have 2y minus 3x is less than 6. So if I'm going to graph this one, I'm going to add 3x to both sides in order to get the y by itself, which now allows me to say 2y is less than 3x plus 6. Now I'm going to divide every term by 2. So then the 2y becomes y. And so I get y is less than 3 halves x plus 3. And so now I'm going to graph this. I have a y-intercept of 3. I have a slope of 3 halves, so up 3 to the right 2. I go down 3 left 2. I go down 3 left 2, and then down 3 left 2. And so now I have to ask myself these two questions. The first question being, is it a dashed or solid line? So if I look at my inequality symbol, it says y is less than. And so the less than tells me I'm going to be dealing with a dashed line. And so I'm going to graph my dashed line through all my points. So that's the first part. Next part is where do I shade? Where is my solution reaching? Now there are two ways to go about this. The first is the algebraic approach. So let me grab this. The algebraic approach, what it does is it tells you to test a point. And so you use a test point. Pick a point that is not on the line. And so if I look at my line, the easiest point that is not on the line is actually 0, 0. It's the easiest number to plug in. It's not on my line, so I can use it. So my test point is 0, 0. Plug this 0, 0 in for x and for y. And so I have 2y, so 2 times 0, minus 3x, minus 3 times 0, is less than 6. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0. So I get 0 is less than 6. And so when you use a test point, you plug in your x, you plug in your y, you do order of operations, and then you look at your final inequality statement, and you ask yourself, is this a true statement? Is 0 less than 6? And 0 is less than 6, so it's true. Now what that means is, that means this point, 0, 0, is in the solution region. So every point that is on the same side of this line, this dashed line, as 0, 0, is a solution. So I shade in the region where my point 0, 0 is located. And so this is my solution region. So that's the first way to do it, the algebraic way to do it. You can use a test point, look for a true or false statement. The way I look at it is I look at what our inequality statement says. And this one you need to remember is different than the way you've done inequalities before. Inequalities before, you've looked at just x being less than or x being greater than. And so you've always told yourself, well, that means I go left, you know, x greater than that means I go right. And the reason why you go left and right is because you're dealing with x, and x is the horizontal variable. That's why you say left and right. But if I look at my equation now, my equation now says y 
is less than. So I'm saying y is less than. So what I ask myself is where are my lesser y variables? Where are my smaller y variables? And your smaller y variables on the y-axis are down in this region. And so you're going to shade so that this region is included. And so I'm going to try and show another example of just using this logic approach. And I'll try and show another one using the test point approach. But those are two different ways to determine where to shade. Test the point. If it's a true statement, you shade in there. If I were to have a false statement, if this were to say 9 is less than 6, then that means that point is not in the solution. So, so then you shade in the other area. So let's try number 2. Y is greater than 3x plus 1. Well, this is already in slope intercept form for me. I have a y intercept of 1. I have a slope of 3. So plus 1, go up 3, right 1. And go down 3, left 1. Down 3, left 1. And then the same idea, two questions. First, what type of line do I use? And so since it's greater than, I'm going to use a dashed line. So I grab my dashed line. And I extend across the whole graph. And now I need to ask myself, where is my solution region? And so for this example, I'm going to use the test point approach. So to determine your solution space, your solution region, pick a test point. And so I look at a point that's not on my line, and I see that 0, 0 is not on my line. So I'm going to use 0, 0 again. And so I do my y value is 0. 3 times x, so 3 times 0 plus 1. Well, 3 times 0 is 0. And so 0 plus 1 is 1. So is 0 greater than 1? Now that is a false statement. 0 is not greater than 1. And so what that means is this point is not in the solution space. Well, your boundary line divides this coordinate plane into two regions. The side over here that contains the point the side over here that doesn't. And so if this point is a false, when it comes to plugging into the test point, if you get a false statement, then you shade the other region. And so here is our solution region. So in this example, I use the test point approach. Pick a point that's not on the line. And so 0, 0 is not in the line. Plug it in. If you get a false statement, you shade in the other region. When I get a true statement, like I did here by plugging in 0, 0, I shade in that region. So that's how the test point approach works. Let's try and use the logic approach here. So I have 3x minus y is less than or equal to 6. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I get negative y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 6. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. Now remember, you divide by negative or dealing with inequalities, you must flip the inequality symbol. Negative 3 divided by negative 1 is a positive 3. 6 divided by negative 1 is a negative 6. So there is my slope intercept form. So I have a y intercept of negative 6. I go up 1, 2, 3 to the right 1, up 3 to the right 1, up 3, right 1, and then up 3, right 1. And again, same idea. We have to ask ourselves our question. What type of line are we going to use? And so since it's greater than or equal to, I'm going to use a solid line. So I'm going to grab a solid line and go through all of my points on the coordinate plane. And now we determine where do we shade. And so for the shading here, I'm going to use, I'm going to say logic for it. I look at the beginning statement. So to determine shading for this one, it says y is greater than or equal to. So where on this y axis 
are your greater y values? Where are the larger y values? Are they above this line or are they below this line? And so my greater y values are located above the line. They're located in this region. There's where all my greater y values are. So when you dealt with regular inequalities, like I said in the beginning, you had x is less than, x is greater than, you always said left and right because x is the horizontal axis. But now your inequality reads y is greater than or y is less than. So instead of the idea of left and right, you do the idea of up or down. You do the idea of above or below. And so where are my greater y values? They're above. They're towards these greater larger numbers in the y-axis. So I shade above my line. And so that is the logic approach on how to shade. You actually read the inequality and figure out where your greater y values are. If I had less than where my lesser y values were. Either approach works. You can do a test point and look for true or false statements. If it's false, you shade away from the point. If it's true, you shade in the region that contains the point. Or you can read the inequality statement and know since it says y is greater than or equal to, you, you shade above because y values are up or down. Or you can, if y is less than, shade below because that's where your smaller y values are. Either approach for shading works. Do whichever one you feel confident with.